Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm talking about what you can do once you finish shooting your Super 8 film. So this is Super 8 film, and I've probably already talked about it maybe once or twice in the past. Super 8, Super 8, Super 8 camera. Now you guys know I love Super 8. Is a Super 8 projector. Super 8 film. A cartridge of Kodak Super 8 film. Super 8 camera. Super 8, Super 8 format. Super 8 film camera. Super 8 is super niche. Kodak Super 8 film. Anyways, I've noticed that there's still kind of a bit of a air of mystery around this whole little format. As much as I've talked about it, there's still a ton of questions out there about kind of what is it, how does it work, and as much as I'm trying to answer every single question out there, there's still a lot of information about it. And one of the big questions, of course, is what happens once you finish shooting your film. So I kind of want to take a quick look at kind of that side of how things work. But first, just a quick little recap. So these are Super 8 film cartridges. They come in little boxes like these, and it is made primarily by Kodak. Super 8 film is safe to handle in complete daylight. You're not gonna ruin it if you take it out of the box in the sun, or even if you take a cartridge out in the middle of shooting it from the camera. So you buy this film and you put it into these cameras. And these are Super 8 cameras. Super 8 cameras will always, always take these cartridges. They just kind of pop into them just like that really easily. They're super easy to load. If you have a Super 8 camera, then it will look something like that on the inside. It will have a spot just to take that cartridge. If it looks something different or if it looks something like one of these cameras, then these are cameras that do not take Super 8 film, but instead take something like Single 8 or Regular 8 or one of the other different little formats. So once you have your film and your cameras, then you're kind of ready to go. You pop the film into the cameras and you shoot it in its entirety all the way to the very end of the roll. And then you have to have the film processed. So this is something that is kind of completely new unless you've ever shot film before. It's really similar to the way that photos work as well if you're just doing photography with film. You can't actually get the footage that you've shot in these cameras off of these little cartridges until you've sent them to an actual film lab that's capable of processing Super 8 film. So Super 8 film and motion picture film in general have to go to a special motion picture film lab in order to be developed properly. If you're familiar with working with photos for photography film, then you have to use a different film lab. Motion picture labs are outfitted with very, very large, very different machines and comparison to photo labs. These kinds of machines will usually be very large with the ability to run a lot of film through them, sometimes very, very quickly. So if you're wondering how to get the footage from your Super 8 cartridge out of this cartridge and onto something like your phone or your laptop in order for you to be able to watch it, see it, share it, and send it to people, then you have to send these cartridges to a film lab that's capable of processing motion picture film. A lot of film labs now though also offer a digital scanning service, which means that once they actually take these cartridges, open them in the dark, put them through a chemical processor, and develop the film properly so that the images are on it, then they will put that processed roll of film through a digital scanner, which means that it will capture each frame on the film individually and create a movie file out of it in a digital format. And then you have something that looks like this, which is a finished digitally transferred copy of your Super 8 film. But of course, a big question is, how do you find a film lab? And where do you find a film lab that is able to do Super 8 film? Well, that's where you kind of have to do a little bit of your own research because motion picture film labs are not necessarily a dime a dozen. In the past, places like Walmart would be able to process Super 8 film, or at least you could drop it off and they would send it away to somebody that could. But unfortunately, in this current day and age, a lot of these services no longer exist. So a lot of the time now, people will actually mail their film away to a lab that is able to do it. And then the film film lab will send everything back to you. So again, a lot of labs will offer a processing service, which is the actual chemical developing process of your film, and a transfer service, which is the digital transferring of your film into a movie file that you can watch. But the number one resource that I always, always direct people to in order to start searching for places that are within their area, or at least within their own country, is the Kodak Motion Picture Lab Directory. And I will, of course, link to this in the description of this video. Kodak's Lab Directory is a big list of different 
motion picture labs around the world that are able to process and handle different types of motion picture film. So the directory shows different labs and also the different services that they provide for the different formats. Now, not every little lab around the world is on there. And there are new labs that open every so often all the time as well. Now here in Toronto, we're incredibly lucky to have a local motion picture film lab that is also kind of currently the only major dedicated motion picture lab in the country. And that is Niagara Custom Lab. And they can process regular eight, super eight, 16 and 35 millimeter motion picture film. And they also have digital transfer services for certain types of films as well. Also in Toronto, we have Frame Discrete. Frame Discrete is a transfer only service for motion picture film formats. And they have the ability to transfer in ultra high definition all these different types of motion picture formats that you give them. So if you're located in Toronto or in Canada, or if you're just interested in mailing your film to some of these places in Toronto, then I will supply links for those places in the description as well. So I really, really recommend that, especially if you're getting into shooting Super 8 for the first time, then you seek out one of these reliable Super 8 motion picture labs in order to get the footage processed properly and transferred well and sent back to you. But also a lot of beginners getting into the format also ask me about what it's like to home develop Super 8 film. Processing Super 8 film or 16 millimeter film or motion picture film in general at home is doable. And with the right setup and skills and knowledge, then it's not always that hard either. But without some initial developing experience and knowledge of kind of how film works in general, then it can be a very, very difficult home developing process. See, developing 35 millimeter film at home for photography is really great intro to kind of how home developing and developing by hand works. You can get really easy, really cheap, affordable equipment to do it with, and the chemicals are also pretty affordable to be able to get to do 35 millimeter rolls at home. You can use simple setups like Patterson home developing tanks for photography rolls. But motion picture film is a large amount. Each one of these cartridges holds 50 feet of film. And if you're developing 16 millimeter at home, then a lot of the time you're working with at least 100 feet of film as well. So there is just a lot more film involved and you need special developing tanks in order to handle that stuff and process it properly. These are usually older tanks like Lomo and Morse tanks and they can be more expensive and harder to track down online. There's also ways of making your own tanks to handle these films as well. And all of that is really interesting and really cool to be able to kind of get into and practice developing film at home. But it's also not necessarily the greatest step for beginners who are trying to do it for the first time. So home developing is definitely something that's really fun and really cool to kind of experiment with. And it lets you learn a ton about how all of this stuff works on a super different level from when you're just kind of shooting it in a camera. But it's also not something that I would recommend as an alternative to seeking out a really good film lab, especially if you're shooting your first Super 8 film ever. So knowing as much as you can about these different formats like Super 8 and 16, 35, and just any of the stuff that maybe you're getting into the for the first time is gonna be really important and really useful in order to make everything worthwhile. So that when you get that footage back or when you get those photos back, you're gonna be happy with how everything looks. Because as strange and weird and difficult as it might all seem, when it's all done properly, it can also be really, really worth it. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to try and answer questions and delve more into these different topics about these different formats. And if you're at all interested in supporting the channel, then you can check out the Analog Resurgence Patreon. There is a link in the description of this video and you can head over there and see what that's all about. And of course, if there's any sorts of big questions and topics that you wanna see me cover and delve more into in the future, then you can comment down below on this video and any of the videos on the channel. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon.